I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. It was so great to see you at the party the other night. Thank you so much for inviting us. We had a great time. I gotta say, it was so wonderful to finally meet your spouse. I was really surprised at how attractive she is for somebody who used to be a man. <clears throat> um, I'm sorry, did I say something offensive? Um, you, uh, you did. You said man, but the correct term would have been woman. Right. Thank you so much for pointing that out. I, I didn't mean to be offensive. I guess what I meant is, I mean, he's just really pretty. She is really pretty. I mean, and I, like, don't get me wrong. I know that it can be a little bit hard to kind of get in the swing of things. It is hard. I know. I want to say the right things, but I'm just not familiar with it. So I appreciate you correcting me, and I'll definitely try to be more aware of that language in the future. That means a lot to us. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Temple University Harrisburg. I'm Susan Washinger. And I'm Lindsay Lugis from the LGBT Center of Central Pennsylvania, located in Harrisburg. If you haven't watched Temple University Harrisburg's introductory video on bias that underlies microaggressions, you may want to check it out before viewing this one. Um, in this session today, we're going to talk about how we marginalize sexual and gender minorities. When we say sexual and gender minorities, we're referring to a broad spectrum of sexual orientations and gender identities. So terms to capture sexual and gender minorities may vary, but for the purposes of this video, we're going to use the acronym LGBTQQIAP+. Probably wondering what all that means. So L is for lesbian, G is for gay, B, bisexual, T, transgender, Q for queer, Q for questioning, I, intersex, A, asexual, P, pansexual, and then the plus seeks to include all others. So sexual minorities, whether based on orientation or on gender identity, um, I think they're gaining some ground in terms of rights and equality in this country, um, but certainly are still one of the most discriminated groups um, in America. Uh, therefore, addressing bias about sexual minorities and gender minorities um, and those microaggressions that result is essential uh, to our striving for social justice for all. Right. So growing up, I remember uh, a lot of people would use the word gay synonymously with weird. Um, so people would say, that's so gay. Yo, 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 check out this chef, right? <laughs> right? That's so gay. That's really gay. Dude, look at those tans. Please don't say that. What? Don't say that something is gay when you mean that something is dumb or stupid. It's insulting. It's like if I thought this pepper shaker was stupid and I said, man, and this pepper shaker is so 16-year-old boy with a cheesy mustache. Just saying. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. While not intended to insult gay people, it certainly could be offensive, and hearing it over and over again could contribute to negative self-image. Right. It makes me think of when people meet someone and find out they're transgender and say, oh wow, but you're so attractive, I would have never guessed. And that's just the thing about microaggressions. They can be sneaky. They often slip out without our even knowing, um, and we often hear them um, without realizing their impact. As we discussed in our first video on bias and microaggressions, even those of us who want to be allies, allies with marginalized groups have underlying biases that can impact what we say. Right, so in this discussion, we'll focus on recognizing uh, gender identity and sexual orientation microaggressions, since it's not always easy to do. To recognize when we or someone else may have been offensive based on bias, it may be helpful to examine some examples. So we'll present examples based on prejudice, stereotyping, and denying power and privilege. Let's talk first about prejudice or bias favoring the majority. In regard to sexual orientation, this is called heterosexism. Heterosexism is bias favoring a heterosexual orientation or not being inclusive of other orientations. An example could include when somebody says something like, um, I really like gay people, um, especially hot women. Right, or when somebody asks their nephew if they have a girlfriend, not recognizing that their nephew may have a partner of a different gender. So in regard to gender identity and expression, that's a bias against gender nonconformity. Some examples of this would include labeling a female with a masculine appearance as butch, or disapproving of an adolescent girl wearing a tuxedo to prom, 
or using pronouns like he or she uh, to which someone does not identify. Let's also talk about stereotyping. Uh, stereotyping is making assumptions or generalizations about sexual orientation or gender identity and expression. Right, so I've heard some well-intentioned allies say things like, gay people are so hilarious. I mean, are all gay people hilarious? Not necessarily, and that's a generalization. Or have you ever judged a person's sexual orientation based on their appearance or mannerisms? That would be an assumption which may or may not be accurate. Right, oftentimes I've heard people say, oh, he is so gay. Right. Um, what's implied by that? Um, what makes somebody more gay than another person? Um, does it imply that particular qualities or characteristics of a person determine their gayness? Um, I'm a huge fan of the TV show Will and Grace, which is actually coming back this season. Um, and in the show, uh, Will is a gay man, um, and his friend Jack is also gay. And Jack plays a character that's very uh, fickle, very flamboyant, um, a very free-spirited individual. Um, in case you haven't met him, let me introduce you to Jack. Well, what do you think? Too gay? <laughs> yeah, definitely. But the shirt's good. <laughs> ah, hold on, I got a cramp from not laughing. I'm also a fan of the show Modern Family. Modern Family has a character, Cam, um, who is characterized as very emotional and very dramatic. Here's Cam. Stella? Oh my God. What, you see her? No, but I see myself in the role I was born to play. Stella! Stella! While these characters make me laugh, uh, Jack and Cam are examples of exaggerated characters that when generalized to the gay community can perpetuate stereotypes that don't apply to all gay people. Right. So our final issue is denial of power and privilege. Minorities, including sexual and gender minorities, do not have the same power and privilege as the majority. Denying the heterosexual orientation or gender conformity play a role in life successes perpetuates actions res resulting from bias or discrimination. In Pennsylvania, a person can be fired for being gay, for that reason alone, just for being gay. Or for being transgender or gender nonconforming. So that's the expression of a gender that's different from what is expected, such as how a person chooses to dress. So now that we've talked about issues of bias related to sexual and gender minorities, um, in order to uh, help you recognize how you might express bias, um, let's talk about what happens when we recognize that we may have been offensive. Uh, research in psychology indicates that uh, when people recognize they're being microaggressive um, or when they increase their awareness of their own bias, they often experience guilt, fear, and defensiveness. Um, unfortunately, this can lead to avoidance or to inauthentic actions that can even further marginalize groups. For example, would you maybe pause before asking someone about their partner or their spouse? Or maybe just avoid asking altogether? When our fear of being offensive causes avoidance, we miss an opportunity to know the person better. So whether you catch yourself saying something offensive or maybe just read somebody's body language and notice that they might be offended, I would encourage you to apologize and ask them if they're willing to explain what was offensive about your comment. Um, I'm sorry, did I say something offensive? Um, you, uh, you did. You said man, but the correct term would have been woman. Right. Thank you so much for pointing that out. I, I didn't mean to be offensive. So sometimes someone will tell us directly that they were offended. And in these instances, it's our natural reaction to say, oh no, that's not what I meant at all. I didn't mean to be offensive. So you know, again, because we think of ourselves as fair and impartial, it is always a bit tricky when our natural bias slips through in the form of a microaggression. And our first res response is to deny, deny, deny. So doing this does little to reassure the other person that you honor them as an individual and you respect them. And so not only have you now made an offensive comment, but you're now placing the blame on them for misunderstanding your comment. So rather than being defensive after apologizing, I would challenge you to listen and to be open to learning about how they perceived your comment. Reflect and seek understanding elsewhere. And if they weren't offended, well, then there was no harm in asking. And finally, forgive yourself. We all have bias. Remember that prejudice, stereotyping, and denial of privilege all stem from bias. Uh, we just need to work on recognizing it, openly talking about it, 
and trying to be as respectful as we can to one another. Being our best selves takes intentionality and practice. Overcoming bias is a journey that takes time, practice, and patience. Thanks for going on this journey with us.